Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are feeling blessed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I pray that you are walking in power of his might, his true power. Oh, come on, somebody, in this hour like never before. Hallelujah to his name. The title of this video is called Jezebel, the wives are secretly running the church. Oh, come on, somebody. We all know those. Hallelujah. And God is not pleased. Hallelujah. Also, Jezebel still trying to kill the true prophets of God. Oh, come on somebody hallelujah let me tell you something throw her down god says throw her down is there anybody on my side come on somebody hallelujah i'm coming from first kings chapter 21 through 5 if you want to look at that and go you know go back and read it later also second kings chapters 9 30 to 37 well as you know in in first kings chapter 21 come on somebody hallelujah we're gonna go there together praise god praise god hallelujah and it's so crazy because God is not pleased with this modern day Jezebel. This, you know, it started a long time ago with the women's movement. Now understand, I know that I am called a woman of God. Understand this. But I also know my authority. My authority do not earth up a man's authority. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Now I'm not saying that I don't have the power in God of a man, but I do not usurp his authority. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And too many women running around trying to be the man. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Trying to lead your husbands. Oh, come on, somebody, in the way of Jezebel's spirit. Oh, I'm just going to call that thing how God says it. So I'm going to go ahead to that chapter right now. Praise God. Just go ahead and um, hold on just one moment because I'm going to do this thing the right way. Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead and press share while you're waiting. First chapter in Kings. So first Kings, and you can go along, come along with me if you want to, on reading this. First Kings chapter 21 and verse, chapter 21, yeah, and, okay, 21 chapter 5. All right, and I always do the King James Version because of the fact we want the pure, undulterated word of God. That means that it's not watered down. Okay, so this was about Naboth, or Naboth, is murdered for his vineyard. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jerusalite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, next to the place of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it, or it seems good to you, and I will give you worth its money. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. And let me tell you something. The same thing that they did back then, the enemy is trying to do tonight, today. He's trying to take our heritage, our birthright for money. And some of you will sell it for money, not understand the legacy. Oh, somebody should have caught that right there because there are things that's in your family, your bloodline. I'm talking about just um, businesses. It, it could be gifts. Come on, somebody. And you will sell out. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying to a man or to a woman. That's the same thing. Oh, let me continue. So verse um, four. So Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I would not give the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down in his bed and turned his face away and would not eat any food. Chapter um, Verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, Why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? He said to her, Because I spoke with Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard. And he answered, I would not give you my vineyard. So then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. Now listen to what she says. I will give you vineyard of neighbor the Jerusalem. That's why the spirit of Jezebel is so prevalent today. Because first of all, what that man should have done, he should have never even told his wife what was going on. He was supposed to go to God. But understand something. Him and Jezebel was on one accord. They were both evil spirits anyway. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. So let's go actually to 2 Kings. I want to go all the way to 2 Kings. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go to 2 Kings. Chapter 9. I'm going to go to chapter 9. Okay. And we're going to start at verse 30. And like I said, I always go to the um, King James Version. And we're going to start at verse 30. Because this is where 
she answers. All right. Well, actually, this is not where she answered. This is where Jehu, and the reason why I skipped so much is because this is what the Lord expects us to do. Verse 30. So I'm in 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30, and I'm going to read to 37. And he says, And then in the 11th year of Joram, the son of Ahab, I started at 29, began Isaiah to reign over Judah. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face. Now, we, now this could talk about makeup right here, but I ain't going to do that, right? All right, I'm going to keep on going. And tied her head and looked out of a window. But but notice, why was the scriptures, why did the scriptures put this in? And we women, we miss it all the time. Why did they feel the need to say that she painted her face and tied her head? Oh, y'all, some of y'all gonna catch that, some of y'all gonna miss that. And looked out of the window, verse 31. And as Jehu entered into the gate, she said, Ha Zamara peace, who slew his master. 32, and he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three Enoch, verse 33, and he said, throw her down. So they threw her down and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and the horses and trod under her feet. And this was the word of the Lord. Praise God, praise God. That is the same word that God has given in this hour. Throw her down. Hallelujah. Some of you don't understand. You're supposed to go to that Jezebel and say, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pastor, preacher, teacher, apostle. Why are you letting your church, your wife run that church? You are out of order, man of God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And you wonder why the women in the church, and, and then she's jealous of the women in the church that have gifts. Come on, somebody. And, and the Bible says that us older women are to entreat the younger women. You can't even do that, pastor, preacher, teacher, because you're jealous of the younger women. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. How are they going to learn? And the reason why they're not learning in this hour, the reason why they don't know how to cook, don't even know how to be a wife, because the older women are still trying to drop it like it's hot, still showing their mature breasts. Oh, come on, somebody. Still dressing. I'm talking about legs, breasts, thighs, as if they, you know, going to Popeye's. You, you in church, lady. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Cover up. You see, you don't have, oh, you don't always have to speak it. You can also be the example of, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Jezebel must die, said the Lord. Hallelujah. And Jezebel don't like a true prophet because we see right through her hallelujah and remember it's a spirit now it's a spirit because even a man can can actually be a jezebel come on somebody hallelujah because remember spirits don't roll in just one demons work in groups come on somebody hallelujah you would never catch a jealousy demon without a greed demon come on somebody hallelujah you won't catch a lust demon without a perversion demon oh come on somebody christians are the only ones that try to be you know superman or superwoman but demons work in groups so let's say you are working with a jezebel spirit at your church you're supposed to fast and pray Fast and pray. You ain't got to um, go to that man or that woman of God and, and, and do it in such a derogatory way. You don't have to be ugly. But you can fast and pray. But you do have to say what thus said the Lord. And some of you prophets are in those churches. Let me tell you something. Oh, Lord, I'm going to go here. God took me out of the church in 2015. Let me re repeat that for those that didn't hear that. God took me out of the church in 2015. Let me repeat that again. The third time, says the Lord. God took me out of the churches in 2015. And I'm going to tell you why. I have been going to churches all my life. And God said, come out of her. And I didn't understand that because I had been going to churches all my life. And yes, walking in the authority of a prophet. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And God said, I'm going to take you out so you can see in. I just said something. God said, I'm going to take you out so you can see in. You guys, and, and this is not every church per se, but churches are tainted. Churches are tainted. I go visit, but I do not belong to any church. I'm going to say that again. I do not belong to any church. I'm going to say that again. I do not belong to any church. And then the first thing y'all going to say is, oh, you ain't covered. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He is my Savior. He is my God. He said, I am the great I am. What are you talking about? Hallelujah. That's that man-made tradition. Tradition. Come on, somebody. Don't get me started on that one. Now, I'm not telling you all to get out of your churches. However... If you are a true prophet in this hour, God is calling you out anyway. Because here's, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to go back in and say what thus said the Lord. But you, most of you can't even operate as a prophet in that church anyway because they ain't letting it. Oh, come on, somebody. The real pastors and preachers and teachers, they might. I say might. But the, face, the fake ones and the false ones, the ones that want full authority, they're not even acknowledging prophets. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, I'm going here. 
Can I tell you something? When you, uh, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. The Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. Isn't that ownership, right? That's ownership. So when you are in the atmosphere, come on, somebody, or in the presence of a prophet, you're supposed to acknowledge that prophet. They won't even acknowledge you because guess what? And I'm just going to be real with you. They see you on Facebook a lot. <laughs> I'm going, I'm talking about myself, by the way. Um, I think she a Facebook. I've been doing this since 1996 under Reverend Clover's A. Rogers. Look it up, baby. I have a lineage since 27 years old. Hallelujah. I just am so obedient that if God says, get out the church, I'm out. If God says, hop, I'm hop. Oh, called hallelujah to his name. If he says, do whatever, I'm doing it. God, guess what? I am not run by man. You see, I don't need your pulpits. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't need your platforms. Come on, somebody. I don't need your accolades. Come on, somebody. I just want the spirit of God. And as long as he is with me, God, don't leave me. Hallelujah. God, stay with me, God. Correct me. Rebuke me. You do what you want to do. Hallelujah. God is reestablishing order in this hour. Hallelujah. Order, order, order to the churches, order to the man, order to the woman, order to the world. Hallelujah. So you're going to see some things come up and you're going to see some things go down. Hallelujah to his name. Jezebel must die. The spirit of Jezebel must die, said the Lord. Hallelujah. But it starts with the church. You know, they had some, so some people can be so, I, I don't want to say ignorant, although that could be a good word. If you don't have the spirit of God and you don't have the wisdom of God, then you do not know God. Point blank in the story. Because you can go to church all day long. That's work, honey. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You can be in church Sunday through Sunday. That's work, honey. You must know his voice. Can I leave you with something? How many of you really know his voice? Oh, come on, somebody, don't fool me now. It's better yet, don't fool yourself. Do you know his voice? Because a lot of people don't know his voice, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you're busy, you're busy, you're busy, you're busy. Let me tell you something what God reiterated with me, which, you know, I'm going to share with you guys. Last night, or was it yesterday? I think it was last night, yesterday around evening time. I heard God say, Deanna, remember your first love. Because I'm going to be honest with you. So many people try to pull me this way, this way, until it's almost like they don't want me to preach. They don't want me to teach. They don't. You understand? They try to wear me out and drain me. And God said, remember your first love. What am I saying? Nothing or no one should come before the law of thy God. I don't care if it's money. I don't care. And some of you, you will work those jobs, two or three jobs to maintain that house, that car, that facade. But you won't give God that same time, that same intense, oh, come on, somebody. I don't know, like y'all know what I'm saying. You go to church if you want to and need to. Or if it's Easter, Christmas, you know, all the holidays or whatever. We must return to the first love. And what he meant by that is, excuse me, I'm still under the weather a little bit. <coughs> excuse me. People are always trying to suck you dry. Trying to trying to take the place of God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because the enemy don't want you powerful. The enemy don't want you anointed. The enemy don't want you appointed. The enemy don't want you to touch somebody's lives and break those yokes, those burdens, the bondage that's over their lives. Because guess what? You ain't got to really just lay hands. Remember, Jesus said a word, the word of God. And if it's coming from an authentic place in God, the power of God will hit you right where you are. Hallelujah. They don't want that in this hour. They want people confused. Come on, somebody. Abused, misused. Hallelujah. But God said, but God said, I got a people. He said, I got 7,000 that haven't bowed down to Baal. Hallelujah to his name. So God bless you. God keep you. This is real. Jezebel must die. And Jezebel, the true prophets, we will not run from you. We will not succumb to you. We will not obey you. Hallelujah to his name. For there is only one God, and his name is, he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. He is Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah to his name. He is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Rule out soldiers, for that is who we are.